Thanks to Wendigo Tea for their support. They're keeping each episode steeped in mystery and value. WendigoTea.com. Your daily game plan for success. It's Sacks in the Morning. Steve Sacks. Hi, Steve Sacks here with Sacks in the Morning. And we're continuing Walk On Week with great stories of guys who walked on to college football teams and then went on to great success. Today's story is about the underdog, but also the importance of preparation. And you know what prepares me for a great day of success? Well, if you're a regular listener, you know the answer to this. It's a big old cup of Wendigo's Bigfoot Black Tea. I tell you what, I've absolutely fallen in love with this tea. It's just about the best tasting version of a simple black tea you could ever imagine. It's sourced from the best resources in China and brought directly to you from wendigotea.com. So if you want to try some of this incredible loose leaf tea, use the promo code of SAX, that's S-A-X, at checkout, and you're going to save 15%. And you can also find that link at saxinthemorning.com. So today's story is about Greg Camarillo. Greg had a decent high school career as a wide receiver at Menlo Atherton High School in Northern California. However, he wasn't recruited to play in college, though he left himself with pretty darn good academic opportunities when he had to decide whether to attend Harvard or Stanford. So he chose Stanford right by his hometown, and he wanted to play on the football team as well. People he went to school with scoffed when they heard that he was trying out for the team as a punter and a wide receiver. But he was added to the roster as a true freshman, and he was given that opportunity. Unfortunately, that opportunity was as a punter, and Greg had been neglecting his punting practice. And when he got into a game as the punter, well, Camarillo told The Athletic this quote, I totally screwed up. Kicked two terrible punts in my moment to play as a walk-on. I had an opportunity as a true freshman to play, and I totally blew it. That kind of shaped my mindset, that there's going to be another opportunity and I have to be prepared for it. Camarillo worked hard at Stanford and ultimately made the team but never started or scored a touchdown as a receiver at Stanford. He never really considered playing in the NFL, but his teams at Stanford were so awful, he decided that he wasn't ready for his football days to end. He worked hard to get an opportunity with the San Diego Chargers. Amazingly, he made the team and was placed on special teams. After two years, he was cut from the Chargers, but his former offensive coordinator was now the head coach of the Miami Dolphins, and he gave Camarillo another shot. He made the team, but the season was doomed from the beginning with problems in the locker room and rebellion against the new coach. But it gave Camarillo an opportunity to play and have one of the best moments of a terrible season. In Week 15, when they were 0-13 and maybe on their way to their first ever 0-16 season, Camarillo, who was never known for his speed, caught a slant at the end of the game, snuck past Hall of Famer Ed Reed, and split the defense for a game-winning 64-yard touchdown. The next year, Camarillo signed a long-term contract but tore his ACL three days after signing his contract. Camarillo said he almost had a, a premonition that he was about to get injured, and he told his agent to hurry up and get him the long-term deal. Camarillo said about that situation, quote, The ACL was the greatest life lesson in don't be greedy. I knew because I had signed that contract and I was going to get a chance to rehab and come back the next year, as opposed to if I hadn't signed the contract, I probably would have been cut a week later. He ended up having a solid eight-year career in the NFL, playing for the Minnesota Vikings and the New Orleans Saints. Camarillo credits all of his success to preparation, and it continued after football. He enrolled in a graduate program as soon as he retired, and today he dedicates himself to teaching student-athletes how to prepare for college, and how to prepare for life after sports. He is the founder of the Athlete Academy, which is a nonprofit that helps kids in underserved communities prepare for college, and he works at San Diego State, helping students as an academic coordinator for the athletic department. So one thing I think is really important that I came across in reading Greg's story was the element of preparation, which really does sum it all up. Because you can't control everything you do in your life. You can control how you prepare, and you can control how you react to what happens to you. But you really can't control the ultimate outcome. It's not in your hands. But those other two elements can get you where you want to go most of the time, and that's my short for today. If you like what you heard, give us a positive review, subscribe, and share. Also remember that the Sacks in the Morning swag is now available 
on my Instagram site. Go to Sacks in the Morning underscore podcast. You'll see it right there on the Instagram and just hit the link. Everything's there. Mugs, hats, tumblers, you name it. Take advantage of it.